equal parts celebrity makeup artist and beauty expert, as well as transformational coach and motivational maven. I've worked with thousands of women, from business leaders, major celebrities and CEOs, to single moms, students, and teachers. And through my book, The Beauty Blueprint, my speaking tours, and many TV appearances, I've developed a powerful process for women all over the world. Are you ready to learn how to reveal your true beauty, radiate self-confidence, and reclaim the love and life you desire? Stick with me because this is where you're headed. Welcome to Beauty, Love, and Transformation. I'm Michelle Phillips, and I'm so excited that we are here with you tonight live because this is all about myself and my guests. Each week, we're going to share powerful tools with you to improve your mindset, your health, and your self-confidence so you are empowered to take the steps to create the life and love you deserve. And, um, you know, it's just with living in this pandemic the past nine months, um, I have gone through a complete um, I guess overhaul, I guess uh, you could say of what it is that I really want for my life and looking through my life um, through a different lens and um, really letting go of a lot of things that don't serve me anymore. And um, same goes for my husband. Uh, we've made some pretty um, big life changes and decided that we were going to take the opportunity um during this difficult time to really reassess what's important to us and let go of what's not. And that's not an easy process. And through our whole journey this past nine months, um, you know, we've been through ups and downs too, going through these changes and deciding what's truly um, important. And um, not just together as a couple, but individually, and then also um, guiding our kids to do the same. And so, it's really um, inspired me to do this beauty, love, and transformation uh, weekly live stream show uh, to bring more and more tools to you all so that you guys can um, join me on this journey and uh, hopefully learn along the way some tools that I've learned as through my training as a life coach and transformation coach. Um, and also uh, by all of us collectively as a big group, you know, here live um, on all of these different social media platforms I have. Um, I, I want you guys to share what's going on with you. What are some things that are working for you? What are some of your challenges? Um, you know, please, you know, write in the comments, speak up, share. So that way we can talk about these things while we're live. And um, also I am going to be bringing guests each week who are close friends of mine um, and people who have sh helped shape and mold my life, as well as been um, people I've worked with for years uh, in, in terms of empowerment, self-help, motivation, health, wellness, um, stress relief, physicians. Um, I've got some great people lined up from all the way until April. <laughs> so thanks so much for joining me. Please let me know that you're here. And also in the comments section, you know, where are you? Um, where are you? Where are you in this country or in the world? I would love to know uh, where you're, you're viewing this from and uh, how you're doing. Just say hi. And even if this is on a replay, I am going to open up the com comments here so I can see them live. And um, please let us know if you're listening to this on a replay, even if you're not live with us. And so um, to get started, you know, I really, uh, I wanna bring in a very dear friend of mine Nancy Yates. Um, she is the she was the director of the Inner Visions um, Institute for Spiritual Development. This is an incredible uh, school where she is also now still a consultant, but also works now on her own uh, doing other work. Uh, and so many of you know Nancy, uh, where we've coached together in the past, and you also know that she's been a huge support of mine. And also my go-to, like when shit's hitting the fan, I call Nancy and I'm like, okay, I can't take it anymore, girlfriend. 
I need a talk. I need to talk to Nancy. <laughs> and so I want to share her with all of you because she helps me tremendously. And I think we have a blast coaching together. Don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, 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 hi. hi. <laughs> Thanks for being here. You're going to be here oh, with me course. tonight and again on Wednesday. I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, I was just talking about how, you know, looking through life, um, through a different lens and it's not easy. And a lot of times, you know, it's like, I know for myself and a lot of clients that I have that we just, we, there are these days where you just are like, what in the world is going on? I mean, the world is absolutely going crazy out there and, um, you know, a lot of us just don't even know how where to begin to process it. Well, and that's the thing, you know, um, especially being trapped inside or, you know, and we are required or I have been required at this time to go within and what's going on for me mm -hmm. and to really, you know, uh, as you were sharing about you and your husband taking a look at what really matters in my life at this time, as we've all had to pull back from people who matter to us and we can't get together with them or see them. And, you know, maybe we're not out shopping and buying everything that we thought mattered. And so really taking a look at you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, what matters? What is giving us life as so many are having lives just taken from them? Absolutely. You know, and, and it can be over in an instant. And so what are, what is feeding us? What is giving us life? What is giving us that energy and vitality and even the you know, some days it's just the, the willingness and the strength to carry on because, you know, some days I, I really want to just throw my hands up and give up yeah, you know? exactly. and just say, ah, I can't, I just can't do this. Yeah. I mean, there's, um, I have, my coaching business has really picked up because a lot of people that I've worked with in the past are coming back and saying, you know, there's so many different things, you know, um, help my marriage is not working right you know, we've been together you know for many months now without really leaving the house without going to work and coming and going we're not just existing anymore we actually have to face each other and mm -hmm. I, it's just not i don't know what to do and then there was another woman um who i just recently spoke with who works in the service industry and she said you know i'm living check to check and um, she said, I am so, I feel so much shame around the fact that I am really like pennies away from not having any money, not knowing what to do. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I shared with her how, you know, years ago I went through a really difficult divorce and right after I, I moved out and had my three little ones and I lost my job right, right after that. And next thing you know, um, I didn't want anybody to know what I was really struggling with. And I was afraid. And I was next thing you know, I'm living on credit cards and then I'm living on food stamps. And I mm -hmm. would, I took a, a job that paid very little money until I could find something else. And I would just run home and get under the covers and say, oh my God, what have I done? What am I going to do? And then right. I got a call from my best friend who said, I have stage four cancer and six months to live. Mm -hmm. And it put everything into perspective. I realized quickly. Yeah. Yeah. We focus um, so often on what's wrong with our lives mm -hmm. or what could go bad with our lives rather than what we can control, which is how we think and feel. And, you know, by thinking and, and, and feeling, you know, what can we focus on that's good and about our lives and, and really reassessing and saying, wow, I, I have so much to be grateful for. I have my children. I have my health. I, ha I have so many possibilities out there. I need to stop focusing on what's wrong and start focusing on what's right with me. And I think when you do that and you change your mindset, especially today, 
you realize that you can shift yourself. And when you shift yourself and you start thinking in a more positive way and looking at your life in a more positive way, more positive things come to you and you begin to become happier and lighter and freer and start making decisions based from on that person. And from there, you can actually influence other people just by leading by example. And that's how we can start to shift our, our and, consciousness, our world. And that's why I say we have to go within because mm -hmm. if we anchor that internally, those things that matter to us, how do I want to feel? How do I want to experience my day, my life, my, my career, my, you know, my, my bedroom, my living room, whatever it is, how do I want to feel? And when we anchor that inside of ourselves, nobody can take that from us, whether it's a partner, whether it's a friend, whether it's a boss, whether it's, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, whether I have money or I don't have money. But it's those simple things that really, again, fill us up and fill internally our hearts and our cups so that we do have more to give to the world. So one of, um, one of, you know, recently, because again, we're transforming and how are we going to emerge from this pandemic yeah. differently than when we started out? Because when everything shut down, everyone freaked out and we were all fear-based and we're watching news 24 seven and feeding, feeding, feeding the fear. And as we slowly you know, get a little comfortable in this and again, get to see what matters. What do we love? I really started to look at what does my ideal day look like? Mm -hmm. Not based on somebody else's, you know, my boss saying you need to work nine to five and produce a certain amount of things and this, that, and the other thing. But what does my ideal day look like? And, yeah. and for me, that's being in nature, taking a walk, that's feeding myself well, that's taking time to listen to what's going on inside of me and not necessarily listening to the news and, you know, gossip and, you know, t all the crazies that are out there that you can right. easily tune into and turn on and get numb your whole self out with and get caught up in everyone else's shit. Yeah. Fear, panic. Exactly. Everyone else's shit. <laughs> I just can't do it. Go over there. And it's know. all energy and it's, you know, and we get frantic and we do, mm -hmm. we get negative and, and it starts to weigh on us and it starts to drag us down. And if we're not just what you were saying, going for the positive, what is working in my life? Yeah. Because what we focus on will grow. Yeah. What yeah. even negative or positive, you know, yeah. if I sit and think to myself, gee, you know what? You're really heavy. You're really fat. And then that's what starts in my mind, in my thinking, in my feeling. And before I know it, it's in my being. It's my physical experience. I'm heavy. I'm weighed down. I'm lethargic. I don't feel like moving. Oh, hell, pull, pull the covers over my head and I'm done. And I'm done. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. And then, you know, the, it's, it's incredible how many people I work with lose weight when they start to love the body they have today. And that's yeah. what we're talking about really essentially is, you know, what is right about your life? What can you like get a gratitude journal and write mm -hmm. down every night before you go to bed, what you're grateful for, for that day. And it's incredible how it will completely shift you. Um, it helps me sleep because then I get all the yes. garbage out of my head. <laughs> But and and also, it's not small. You know, the yeah. ego has a tendency to grab a hold of something like a gratitude journal. Oh, I didn't make enough gratitude statements, or <laughs> I'll write 50 statements a day. No, yeah. you're not. Write right. three. Yes. If you're not doing it at all, 
do small little increments so that momentum starts to build and it becomes a habit because so quickly the habits that we have that are so ingrained, we just slip right into them. So the yeah. only way to break a habit is to create a new habit. So t- taking up a gratitude journal, write th- three things that you're grateful for at the end of your day, only three, and yeah. let that grow. As you start to focus more on being grateful for what you have, the focus on what you don't have starts to gently fall away. Yes, absolutely. And what, you know, the other, um, to, to add to that, something else that really has been powerful in my life and then with others I've worked with, and I believe you as well have maybe been the one that worked on this with me, is um, to really look back at what you have accomplished in your life. And I'm not talking about like your career. um, I mean, like what have you gone through that's been super difficult that when you were faced with this difficulty, you thought to yourself, oh my God, how am I going to deal with this? I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle it. And you just, you think there's just no way, but you do. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, you come out of that and you think, wow, okay, I, I, I got through that. And not only did I get through that, you realize that you're stronger than you think. You have more, um, you, know, thing, you know, resources to draw from, not only outside of you, but within you to help you move through these things. And you, you come out even better. I mean, Rick and I were even talking about this at dinner tonight, that at the time that we're faced with these difficulties, we don't realize that there's a huge blessing in it. Mm -hmm. And there's a blessing that's going to show you, wow, okay, look what I did. And then look how much better my life is now. Right. And if you could think of just one thing and write that down and then write down everything that you had to do and what it took to get through that and look at how amazing you are. (laughs) And then from there, how can you use those same qualities to get through what you're going through now or to achieve something different or move in a new direction um, or let go of something that scares the hell out of you. Um, it, yeah, it really, I have, really forget. Um, you know, usually if I'm stuck somewhere or stuck in something, you know, usually my own nonsense, um, I'll ask myself, what is this here to show me? Mm-hmm. What is this here to teach me? And then when I do get to the other side, so what worked? What didn't work? And if I had it to do again, what would I do better? Just as, um, you know, I and I say that um, with a little uh, caveat because when I used to do that, you know, how could I do this better? It was through a critical eye. But now it's, you know, and that would just drive me. But now it's more for inspiration, you know, and I don't necessarily revisit the same lessons, you know. I mean, some I I clearly revisit over and over again, and I wish I could move. (laughs) (laughs) But, oh, well, (laughs) there's something for me to learn. Um, yeah. And when I do that, do you find this to be true for you? I, I for me, I, this is usually what the um, thing is that I didn't do uh, correctly. And that was listen to myself. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm just going to tell you a little story. So I'm painting my downstairs. Okay. Which really in the midst of all of this, I need to paint my downstairs. And, and no offense to Walmart, so please don't take this the wrong way, but I had- You're not bought, a sponsor yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bought white paint at Lowe's and I painted the living room, but I have an open floor plan. So, okay, I wanted to go to Walmart for other things and I said, oh, I'll just pick up a can of paint. But my intuition said, no, you bought the first can of paint at Lowe's. And you should really go back to Lowe's. And I, you know, nah, never mind, blah, blah, blah. Something so simple. And white paint is white paint. Until you paint next to the white paint that you painted before, 
and it's two different shades. And had I listened to exactly what you're saying, my intuition, my inner knowing that said, you know what, go to Lowe's because you already bought the white paint at Lowe's previously, I wouldn't have to be repainting everything, you know? Yeah. And that is a, a prime example. And it could happen all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, where exactly. I often, in my, my heart and soul and my gut tells me, okay, you needed to do this. And then I'll go, oh, no, you know what? I, I, I promised so-and-so I would mm -hmm. help them or I probably should do this or should do that. Or maybe, um, yeah, maybe what I'm thinking really isn't right. And so I'll just go ask three other people what they think. Mm -hmm. And that is when it is typically that is it's so wrong for me. Totally so off wrong. track, totally the hard way and yep. wind up having to scrap a whole lot of stuff and yep. start from square one is my yes. experience yes. of that. But, yes. and, you know, I mean, how often do we hear a woman's intuition and we disregard it, betray it, don't trust it and don't tap into that. But there is an inner knowing and, mm -hmm. and there is an inner knowing in men as well. So I don't yeah. want to leave them out. However, when we, we disregard that, it is a form of betrayal. Yeah. And we have to um, build ourselves. that trust, mm -hmm. that trust muscle within our own selves. Can I trust that I'm going to make the best choice for me? Can yes. I trust that I'm going to listen to that small inner voice that is leading me and guiding me to the best choice and decision for me? Absolutely. I have a, a quick story um, about my tennis coach about, I don't know, eight years ago when I was rebuilding my life and, um, and he was my dad's best friend and he coached my little, my kids when they were little all the way until they got older. And so he's like, why don't you get out in the tennis court with me and let's, you know, let's mm -hmm. hit some balls and just, you know, get you out there, make you feel better. And so I was like, okay. And of course my dad at the time was alive and he was all excited because he was into to tennis. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to go, you know, watch me get lessons and stuff. And, and so I would get out there and he would show me how to hit the ball, the forehand and the backhand. And I used to play when I was younger, but I was really rusty. And so he's like, okay, so let's, let's play, let's, let's play a game. And so I'd start playing with him and he'd say, you got to trust yourself. <laughs> You're not following through. You, you gotta trust yourself. And then I'd, I'd like, I'd get like, you know, I'd set it up and I'd get ready to swing and I'd go, oh God, am I gonna miss it? And then I, and he'd say, you have to trust yourself, Michelle. And um, and he and his wife are just like super close friends of of mine and me and Rick's uh, still to this day, his coach Bob. And um, and I walked away from that tennis lesson and said this is my new mantra. Yeah. I'm going to tr learn to trust myself because not only am I not trusting myself and playing tennis, how many other ways am I not trusting myself in my life? And as I started to become aware of where I was holding back and not trusting myself, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mean to tell on you, Michelle, but no, most of our work together uh -huh. is me encouraging you to stay true to you <laughs> and exactly. trust, trust That's right. what you're being led and guided to. I Don't, know. I won't tell on you though. <laughs> oh God, no, that you. And then Nancy's always like, Michelle, if you don't stay true to yourself, you know what happens. You know, you know, if I'm getting ready to do big speaking engagement for 3000 people, I'm calling Nancy. Okay. I need some liquid. I need some, not liquid. I need some Nancy courage. I need, I was like, Sometimes we need the liquid. And I, I was doing that too. But yeah, it's like, what? And, um, mm -hmm. and then, uh, I was just going to say hi, Kim and Rick and Sharon and Helen and Ann and all these, I love you guys. And Nancy says hi too. They're all saying hi to us. Um, but, Honestly, you know, what happens when you learn to trust yourself and stay true to yourself is you find yourself also up against 
um, you know, some difficulties in making decisions that may not appeal to other people in your life or may not make other people happy because we've been trained as women to, you know, be the nice girl, you know, don't make waves, you know, take care of everybody else but yourself. And so when you're really uh, exercising, trusting yourself and listening to what's right for you. Sometimes that means showing up and saying to others, no, this doesn't feel right. I've decided not to do this. Or, you know, thank you so much for your opinions and, and your advice, but I've decided, you know, th this is how I'm going to do stuff, whether that be your family members, your friends, your spouse, whomever. And so it's really practicing and exercising that muscle of getting that courage um, to say, okay, this is how I really want to do things, whether that was a speaking engagement and, and changing the topic, you know, I mean, it could be anything that has come to me through the years where I'm like, wow, this is really not the old Michelle would go along with whatever I needed to do to make everybody happy first and not have confrontation. The new Michelle says, okay, check in, something mm -hmm. doesn't feel right. And that's tough. That's really tough to do. So, you know, the, it, but again, like you said, you you betray yourself if you don't. So then you end up pissed off. Well, and that's the that's the interesting <laughs> thing. We're so um, afraid of pissing other people off, yet mm -hmm. we can walk around with that internal conflict and that internal, you know, war raging inside of us that we we didn't honor and we didn't stay true to our own selves. So, you know, what is that about upsetting our own selves? It would, you know, it's okay for us to stay upset, but we're afraid to upset others in making choices that actually honor and, and, you know, reflect what we desire in our lives. Right. What do you want in your heart and soul? Right. That's a question I don't know if a lot of people ask of themselves. I would love to know for all of you listening right now and watching, um, what is it that you want for yourself? What does your heart desire? And is that easy for you to actually follow through with honoring with that? Mm -hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Because it was, it's still something I have to practice, but I'm getting better at it. And as I get better at it, um, yeah. And even if, you know, like some of those things, like even if you ask that question, you know, what is it that I really do want? And even if it turns out to be, you know, a materialistic thing or, but take that deeper, you know, what does that really represent for you? So mm -hmm. if it's a certain car or if it's a certain clothing or, you know, some, but what, what do you think that thing is going to bring to your life? What's the energy behind it? What's the feeling that you'll, you'll gain or get, get from that and really nurture that concept, really nurture that, that um, feeling, that energy, as opposed to, Oh, you know, again, we get caught up in the, well, I don't have enough money to buy that kind of car but really tapping into what does that real that thing really represent to you is it power is it peace is it is it love is yeah. it excitement is it enthusiasm and once you tap into that energetic looking at the different places where some of that already exists because we can't recognize something or even identify it unless we already know it to be in existence because otherwise you wouldn't be able to name it or claim it right and, and I, yeah if you're not and, doing that then you're just going through the motions of maybe doing something thinking it's going to bring you some kind of fulfillment and then once you get it it's not, empty it, yeah. it doesn't measure up but mm -hmm. looking at those places Oh, you know, if I had a partner, that would mean I, I was experiencing love. Okay, well, what are the ways that I love myself? What are, where is love present in my life already? 
Because again, you become a vibrational match for the very thing you desire and you draw it to you as opposed to working for it. And then, you know, we, we put these things, these people on pedestals. And then once we get it and achieve it, ah. Yeah. I, it, it, you don't yeah. feel fulfilled. No. Yeah, because you, it's not a match to you. You know, you just re reminded me of something that you brought to my attention and, and uh, taught me. It was probably about eight years ago. Uh, you said, what is it that you want in a relationship? And at the time we were talking about a romantic relationship, but this could go for, you know, friends. And I hear, I just see Rick has a question. How does this relate to friends that aren't working out in your life? And this could relate to friends or re romantic partnerships. So I had just come out of a really bad relationship. And I said to you, I love this. <laughs> If you guys could only like hear our conversations when we're not in public, it's so fun. Like, we just let the you know the fun. F bombs fly and stuff. So I was like, <laughs> um, okay, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Because I keep choosing the same man over and over again in a different body. And um, and so you said to me, you are a different Michelle now, which I was. And you said, so all that shit, you're gonna pack up. And you're going to put it in a box and you're going to take it to the curb and the trash man is going to take it away because that does not live in you anymore. That I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy, blah, 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 low self-esteem. I had worked on for many years and that I had worked on moving that out. And you reminded me so beautifully. It's like, okay, no, you're not going to repeat this anymore because you are not that person anymore. So what I want you to do, this is what you said. I want you to write down what it is that you want in a relationship. Like what qualities do you want a relationship? And so I was like unconditional love. I want somebody trustworthy. I want someone who, um, you know, has is empathetic, who's spontaneous, blah, blah, blah. I went all the way down the line. So you said, okay, so do you love yourself unconditionally? And I was like, oh, wow, that's a big <laughs> That would be a no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No. How many times do I beat myself up a day? And then it was, uh, do, you, um, uh, do you trust yourself? Are you empathetic uh, to yourself? You know, are you all the things that you want in a partner because who you are going to attract who you are, not necessarily what you want. And I thought, I mean, that changed my life because that is when I said, OK, it took my work as a coach to the next level and it took my life to a much better place because I started living my life and treating myself the way that I want to be treated and started loving myself and honoring myself and taking care of myself. And it's still an ongoing journey, but I mean, wow, I would have never met my husband and been with this man had I not done that level of work because he is a vibrational match now to, he loves me unconditionally. Um, and I think that's because I love myself unconditionally. Yeah, you know, he, that's he, the thing that people, you, know, you know, they don't teach us about relationships is if we come in with a belief system that we're already uh, broken or have a deficit, the mm -hmm. other person is going to mirror that. Yeah. And the other person is going to reinforce that so that you you know, and I'm saying you or each yeah. of us, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. because we want to be right, even mm -hmm. if it's making us wrong. Yeah. And so whoever we're in relationship with, whether it's a boss, whether it's a friend, whether it's a partner, when we invite that other person in, they only can reflect to us what's going on internally for us, whether we're mm -hmm. conscious of it or not. Now, we get upset with the other person because we may not have been aware that maybe that belief system, um, you know, is running. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm unworthy. I'm broken. I'm stupid. You could rattle off a whole list yeah. of things. 
and we may old. not it, right exactly and we may not have you know really be become aware of what that internal conversation is going on but trust and believe that other person is already mirroring it for you yes whether that's a friend so if you're having challenges with your friends take a look at what is their behavior bringing up for you what is that modeling what is that demonstrating to you and right. if you see something, a behavior you don't like, take a look at, oh, wait a minute, where do I do that? Mm -hmm. You may not necessarily do it in the same fashion because each of us as unique individuals will do it, you know, and put our little cuteness on it or our little sugar and spice and put a bow on it and dress it up. But trust and believe if you can recognize some not so nice behavior in somebody else you got it going on inside of you yeah true oh my good friend moses he's oh, I louise, love him. Oh. <laughs> he's louise hayes best friend and she introduced him to me and just i you know he's like a, a little angel and so he called me um during the election when everything was going on and he said I'm getting so riled up because he was just getting so upset at what he was seeing and and you know with certain people and stuff. And, and so he said, I've decided instead of getting mad, I'm going to look at the qualities of the person that I'm upset with mm -hmm. that he's seeing on TV. Um, that's, you know, in the political world. And he said, and I'm going to look at where I have that in myself. And so one of the, who was the, one of the qualities that, um, well, that uh, was one of the things yeah. yeah, he said, I see someone with a sense of entitlement. And he said, so I'm looking at my life and saying, where do I have these issues of entitlement where I think I'm entitled? And he said, I do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop that. You know, and I was like, oh, my gosh, what a great way to look at, you know, people that are challenging instead of looking at them and being so angry and nasty and just saying, wait a second here, you know, where, where, what's going well, on? And that's how we clean up our spaces in the world. So mm -hmm. for instance, you know, if you look at the hate in the world, yeah, whether it's, you know, racism, whether it's, you know, the Trump versus Biden, whatever the hate yeah. that's out in the world, yeah. I really had to take a look at, okay, where do I have hate in my heart? Mm -hmm. And cleaning up those areas within me. Right. So Thanksgiving came around. Never been a fan of Thanksgiving. It's just not my holiday. Mm -hmm. ba basically because in my early childhood, everyone would get drunk and then there'd be a fight and it would just turn into a disaster. So I just instilled in myself that I hate Thanksgiving. <laughs> but it, the truth yeah. of the matter is, is I don't hate it at all. Yeah. <laughs> if you get back to what the real holiday is about, being thankful, being grateful, doesn't yeah. have anything to do with getting drunk and getting into a fight with your family and, you know, misbehaving and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. And really cleansing and clearing out those things that I hate or I hated about a holiday. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't have to live with that. No, I was chuckling because I hate Thanksgiving too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was kind of sounded bad when That's I why we so get along. <laughs> I was like thinking in my mind, I hate Thanksgiving because I just uh. cooked. Day. Everybody sits down and eats in five minutes, and then they're like, then "Okay, they, right, yeah, bye." Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was well, but the kids were little. It wasn't bad, but then now it's like they all show up, and then they have to go other places. And I'm like, right. "Why do I do this?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. No, what are we doing, doing all this for? Right. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I think uh, you know we're in the holidays right now. Holidays, it's so difficult because, like we were talking about relationships, and we've got family and we have friends, and this is a difficult time for a lot of people because, especially people are being pulled in different directions and they don't want to do things and it's hard to say no. And then, you know, 
you might be guilted and well, why aren't you coming or why aren't you going to do this? And so, you know, but the more and more that I am true to myself, like we were talking about you focusing on, and I only share this for me just because as an example, um, you know, the more and more I say, okay, is this right for me? Or do I really want to go to this event or whatever it is? Um, if, if I don't honor that, I'm pissed off at myself later. And then, but if I I say no and the other person gets really upset, um, you know, I, I have to also see that maybe that that's not in me what they're how they're acting. But if they start to really act in a, a way that's nasty, then I just go, okay, that doesn't resonate with me anymore. Mm-hmm. Because I I'm a very caring, loving person. So, if, you know, I would hope someone would treat me in that way and just say, oh, I understand. And, you know, it's all good. Or, but if somebody gets nasty and back at you, which I know I'm sharing this because I think a lot of people deal with this this time of year where people get mad and they're trying to control and, you know, the family members are saying, you know, trying to oh, guilt yeah. you. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple <laughs> of them. <laughs> you know, a lot of people aren't comfortable with getting together. And then they're still having their family members go, what are you talking about? We still, you know, and so it, it's tough right now. I've, I've had a lot of clients tell me that they're dealing with this. And I'm like, you know, if they get mad at you, um, you know, it's okay. But mm-hmm. you don't have to participate in that. Right. And the more you honor and love yourself and the more you stay true to yourself, you know, on the flip side of what we were talking about before, where is that in us? I think it's also when that's not in you anymore, that confrontational type person or that. Yeah. And, that you know, the so, thing of it yeah. is, is that it's a practice where mm-hmm. none of us are going to do it perfectly. Right. And so when we first start out trying a new behavior, Trust and believe people are going to get upset. You change the rules. They depended on you to behave some one certain way. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you're going to, you know, upset the apple cart. And so, and you may give in. Okay. But at least you took that step to say, hey, you know what? No. Right. Right. And then maybe the next time that you're faced with that same confrontation, because if it is a lesson and a blessing that you're to learn, it will repeat itself, as you and I talked about. It will come (laughs) up again. I know. (laughs) So you get to take one more step in the second time. And so making it a practice and not trying to get it perfect and nailed down and all everything's right but okay, can I take one step towards what I desire? Right. And really just slowing it down and not trying to get it all done in a nice, neat little package with a bow on it and everybody's happy and peppy and bursting with love. It, that's not how it happens. No, exactly. <laughs> Life the is messy. This, the more it'll show up because the universe is just going to make sure that that's what you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How bad you want this? Because I'm going to show up with a lot of, you know, that's what, when I'm coaching people, I'm like, okay, this doesn't mean it's easy. Um, there's simple practices, but you just have to stay true to yourself and, and practice these things over and over again. Because once you decide to make positive changes for your life, um, it's almost as if, you know, the universe will come in and throw some curveballs at you. And let, let's just, let's just put this in the mix and see what happens. Let's see how serious mm-hmm. you are about staying true to Absolutely. this. Path. And so, you know, that's, that's why I think, um, you know, it's been so great uh, working with you and, and also coaching others because it's really, it, it's good to have support in your life, positive support. So if you're not going to work with a coach, no big deal. Find somebody in your life though, that's supportive that you can call. Um, like I do Nan- Nancy every once in a while and go, okay, everything's going bad shit. Like I need to talk. <laughs> Get me out of this head. Or, you know what? One of the really good things about you, Michelle, is you always have a larger than life vision. Yeah. And and it's like, it's too big. No, you can do this. You really can. And again, just 
what's one step you can take? Every yeah. journey starts with one step. Right. And so how can you break it down and move in the, in the direction of what you desire? Yeah. And not make it such a, a Oh, because we do go to overwhelm and it is so huge. And, and then I know for myself, I'll wind up doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's, yeah. Oh, I've done that. Okay. I've I never done. wanted it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is, you know, this is so true. And this is why I, I guess, I mean, not I guess I know I keep coming back to this work because it yeah. is the most fulfilling and gratifying because as I do it and help others, I'm not only helping others, I'm helping myself too, but hopefully this help giving back to help this planet be a better place, just one person at a time. And so, you know, it's just uh, something I can bring back to. You know, learning from everyone, you know, while you and I, yes, we've done our work, but the beauty of, I, I know how I work is I also learn from my clients. Me too. I'm not always the teacher. I, I often am the student. Now, it may come off as though I'm teaching, but the truth of the matter is, is I'm on the learning line with everyone else. Yep. And so as I support others, you know, and creative ideas come through, I have to say for myself, I wouldn't give my client anything to do that I don't do my own self. Yes, Exactly. And sometimes working with your client reminds you of what you need to do to get back on track. Yeah. And you can only coach as high as you're willing to go. Yeah. So if you're working with a coach and you feel stuck, trust and believe that coach is stuck as well. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. yeah. Mm, good information. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I just want to share, we've got uh, Sharon saying that um, maybe oh, COVID is giving us all simple ways to be true to ourselves, given the guidelines are not to gather in large groups. I stopped trying to please my family of origin many years ago and felt awful at first, was called out many times, but I was so relieved I started to put my family's needs first. And that's, yes. that's absolutely true. Absolutely. About me taking a second here to read it. I don't have my cheaters on, but uh, <laughs> and I'm learning from listening to you ladies. I'm thankful. Thank you, Kim. I'm so glad oh, you are. Nice. Great to see Carol here. Carol, progress, not perfection. Preach ladies. Yes, Carol's yes. awesome gone through a breast cancer treatment this year and oh my goodness like she is like an inspiration she could be a coach too she's just been so I just um a former student just got breast cancer diagnosis we just got a uh, request to pray so um well, we yeah for her and carol is so inspirational that oh wonderful you know, I'll, I'll volunteer, Carol. <laughs> I, I actually have a I podcast that out. I recorded with Carol that I will share with you about her progress, her her process, um, and how positive she was during her whole treatment and um, the tools that she used to get through it when she was afraid of needles and all kinds of things during her um, mm. chemo and stuff. And oh my gosh, she you know, shaved her head and was like, I'm beautiful just the way I am. Like she came out this whole process. Awesome. Really, um, she's always been a very inspiring young woman, but I think she really um, came out and just like, wow. It was like a badass rock star. I was like, wow, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> like, I she love it. Power, and so she's doing great. So, uh, and Sharon said, please share your, um, oh, your coach, your girl's first name, so she can pray for her. She loves praying for others. Your, um, if you're allowed. Oh, to Felicia, sorry. Felicia. That's, uh -huh. okay. That's okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, we are going to be back together here Wednesday at four o'clock, right? Yes, we are. We are. So um, if you guys have questions or uh, topics you'd like for Nancy and I to talk about, 
uh, please put them in the comments section because we would love to know before the show. And of course, during the show on Wednesday, uh, we will be live here again. So you are welcome to post your comments at that time as well. So Nancy, how can people get in touch with you if, um, if you, you know, Oh, well, they can certainly bother you, Michelle, because yeah, you, you can know. just email me. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You guys you can reach out to people in your life. <laughs> That's right. I have, uh, if anybody's serious about reaching out to Nancy, let me know. And you can go to info at michellephillips.com. And um, I will definitely, if you know, you guys are interested for sure. And um, for anyone who shares this broadcast today, I am going to give you guys a gift of my Overcoming Fears and Obstacles one hour class that I gave. Um, and I will send that link to you. So just um, share at the um, hit the share button. So that way, uh, more people can see this show because we'd love to get the word out. And we really appreciate you guys being with us How today. Fun is that? Yeah, we want to support you. And we want to a gift. Work. That's fabulous. A gift. I know. Well, you're a gift to me, Nancy. Oh, so thank you so much for being here. Of course. Anytime. Thank and I look forward to seeing you again Wednesday at four o'clock, right? Okay. Here, same time. Well, same place. Not same time. <laughs> four o'clock. It's late. It's seven. It's like my bedtime soon. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. Well, with it getting dark early, it feels like it's about midnight. I have to I say. I know. I know. All right. Well, thank you guys so much, and uh, we will see you. Like I said, right here at four o'clock on Wednesday. Thank you, Nancy. Bye. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Rick, Kim, Helen. Helen, it's great to see you. Sharon, everybody, I really appreciate you being here. And again, if you can share this, I would love it. And I will just, uh, just go ahead and post in the comment section that you shared, and I will send you that course, Overcoming Fears and Obstacles. You guys take care and have a great night. Bye -bye. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for my email on my website, michellephillips.com, so you don't miss an episode. And join my online community on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.